Kia ora Koto. Welcome to Measuring Your Social Media Effort webinar. Um, this is the third webinar in the Optimize webinar series. My name is Helen Bartle and I'm the Senior Advisor for Audience Development and Capability Building at Creative New Zealand. Um, I just want to remind people that um, you're all on mute at the moment, but we will take you off mute during question time. The structure of the webinar today will be in two halves. The, there'll be a first half, then a short break for questions, followed by the second half. In terms of the functionality, you can use the Q&A box on the far right-hand side if you have a question. And then the chat box just directly above that is for any messages or issues. Um, you can also chat with all participants or you can uh, send a message to one of the panelists if you would like to. Um, so today's informative webinar is going to be led by online marketing consultant Vicky Allpress Hill, who many of you know is the director of the Audience Connection. And it's going to be quite a practical and very accessible webinar that's going to show you how to set measurable social media goals for your organization or project and also some of the best freely available social media tracking tools there are out there for you to use. Um, we'll also be covering social media metrics that can help you track achievements of your goals and how to set up um, a regular process for reporting to your team or board. Um, what's also exciting is interspersed throughout this webinar will be some of the social media benchmarks that are freshly available from the Optimizer online marketing benchmarking project that we've been running with the Audience Connection and Arts Australia. So these are New Zealand benchmarks that are really applicable to your organization and the arts. So without um, further delay, um, I'll hand you over to Vicky. Thank you, Helen, and hi, everyone. Welcome to the third webinar of the 2014 series, and thank you for um, joining us this morning. As Helen mentioned, today's webinar will be broken into four sections, and then um, we'll have the questions at the middle and also at the end. Um, my goal is that you will sign off at the end of this webinar with some fresh ideas about the purpose of your social media activity and an understanding of the reporting tools and metrics that are available to you so that you can start gaining a better understanding of the return on investment of your social media activity. And you can also feed that back into your organization. So we all know that social media is critical for arts organizations who want to thrive. And Helen mentioned the Optimizer online benchmarking program that we're running. We've had the pilot results come out, um, which has given us an indication of where the sector, the art sector stands um, across a range of online marketing benchmarks. And we can see just how social media has boomed from these pilot results. Um, in the year July 2012 to June 2013, um, there was a 69% growth on Facebook likes amongst the 38 participants and an 81% growth in Twitter followers. Now that's not to mention all the other platforms that individual organizations are using, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Tumblr are really starting to be used more often. <coughs> but clearly, a great deal of investment, budget, staff, time, and skills is being put into social media by local arts organizations. But do we really understand why we are using social media and what our investment is supposed to be achieving? Um, as the writer Ali Merman says in a recent article on HubSpot, it turns out we don't advocate using social media just because it's fun, though it is, she goes on to say. We do so because social media drives some significant business results for both us and our customers. So how many of us in arts organizations can honestly say we understand and can articulate what significant business results our social media activity drives for us? How do we begin setting social media goals that are meaningful, that prove the value of our investment, and ensure we are meeting milestones that will take us in the right direction? 
I know this is a question for many of the arts organisations I work with or talk to. <clears throat> and it's not helped by social media's place in some arts organisations. In many cases, social media is being led by someone relatively junior who happens to be, quote, good at social media stuff, I hear that a lot, or has a penchant for, social, for Twitter, for example. Um, and the general manager or CEO has completely lost control of the process and outcomes. The scenario in this cartoon is not unusual in this situation. In other organisations, the reverse can be true and the general manager or CEO is strangling due to fear the ability of their organisation's social media channels to achieve broader community goals. So what do we do? How do we determine what social media should be achieving for us? <clears throat> I'm all about simplifying things. And setting social media goals comes down to one core thing. Calgary-based digital marketer Ernest Barbaric put it succinctly in his article, 3.5 Steps to Setting Intelligent Social Media Goals. He says, everything starts with the sole purpose of your business. <clears throat> so your social media activity needs to be ultimately working to achieve your organizational goals, right? I'm talking about the big top level goals that drive your organization towards its mission. Social media should be helping your organization to reach these. But let's break it down further. Each of your organization's functional areas will have goals and strategies to achieve that they need to achieve. Artistic, operational, marketing, development and sponsorship and fundraising, education, community and more. If you are managing your organization's social media activity, then you should be keenly aware of the goals of each, in each of these areas because your social media goals come out of these and then feed back into these to help achieve them. <coughs> For example, social can help you create a dialogue with audiences in order to achieve community goals. Social can help you improve customer service in order to help achieve your marketing goals. Social media can enable you to engage people with your art form, but this is in order to help you achieve your artistic goals, and so on. Social media does not stand alone. So if you are investing in staff, time, resource, and skills development, then you need to make sure social media plays the appropriate role in your organization. <clears throat> and note that social media is not just about marketing either. It can positively impact all areas of your organization and should be viewed in that way. I mentioned the quote uh, from Ernest Barbaric earlier. He talks about a litmus test where you work backwards from your digital marketing objectives by asking the word why right back to the core business objective. And we can apply this to our social media goals. So if we take this theatre company example I have here, you may have a social media goal that says we want to increase the number of people talking about our work on Facebook. Why? Ask yourself why. Because we want to know how they are responding to our work and we want them to share their experiences with us, others. Why? Because one of our artistic goals is to make work that is relevant to our target audiences. Why? Because one of our reasons for being is to produce high quality theatre that has social relevance to people living in our city. It's a great exercise to really test your social media goals. <clears throat> I want to share with you some real social media goals from arts organisations. Here's a collection of them. Um, some of these goals I've been told about or listened to in case studies. Others are social media goals that my clients have set while working with me. They may inspire you and later when you have a copy of the presentation PDF uh, and PowerPoint, um, you can study these to determine which ones could be relevant for your organization. Note that none of them are about specific social media platforms. We're not at that level yet. We're talking about things overall that social media can achieve for your organization. Also note that none of them are specifically directly sales oriented, increase ticket sales, attract more donors. This is because social media is inherently a non-promotional platform. It's about community, conversation, sharing and listening. It's about building relationships with your various audiences. I'm not saying that social media doesn't increase ticket sales or donations. Um, it does ultimately as a secondary outcome. And it's important to us because increasing revenue and becoming or remaining financially sustainable are critical organizational goals for all of us. But what I would say is that social media creates an environment that is conducive to achieving our rev revenue goals as a secondary outcome. For example, I read the other day 
that people are 51% more likely to support your nonprofit organization after they like you on Facebook. That's really interesting. <clears throat> so you're thinking about the environment that you are creating uh, with social media, an environment of trust, of loyalty, of engagement, and a closer relationship. What I suggest is you pick the three or four most important goals and focus on those for your social media activity. So in the case of our fictional theatre company, these may be the four, around community, brand awareness, increasing knowledge of the art form, and demonstrating thought leadership as a theatre. A couple of real life examples. Opera Australia is specifically using social media to enhance the organisational goal currently of becoming a media centre for opera, where opera lovers can gather online for resources and news about the art form they love. So social media is specifically serving that goal. And some of you who heard the first webinar may have heard me talk about the Museum of Modern Art in New York City's MoMA Teens blog. They are specifically using social media to engage youth audiences and they have developed their channels and tactics accordingly. Social media goals can be as varied as the arts organisations we work for and their audiences. <coughs> Once you have defined your overall social media goals that feed into your organisational goals, then it's time to review or consider the individual social media platforms and activities that you focus on, not before. So the strife we often get into is when we create a social media channel without having undertaken the goal setting exercise behind it. That sort of behaviour is what results in that panicked feeling on a Monday morning when you know you should tweet something and you can't think what it is. <clears throat> so the model, this model I recommend for organisations I work with is to create specific smart objectives, targets or KPIs, whatever you call them, but they're specific time bound things by social media platform and then include a column at the end for those things that are not platform specific that might be across multiple platforms or not even related to the platforms and they feed into each social media goal. So if you look here, I've picked out one of the goals for our fictional theatre company, increased brand awareness. I've listed the channels that um, they have decided to use, uh, the channels that they, after a bit of research, have worked out are the best to achieve that goal, and um, and in, in a non-specific, non-platform specific column. And under each of those columns, I've thought about all the metrics that can help to prove that they're working towards that goal, um, and set the specifics at that point. Now, some of these metrics are going to come up later in the webinar. Um, this is so much more meaningful than starting out blind saying let's get 2,000 new likes in the next two years. You're really thinking about what achievements will help you reach that goal. So you can study this in a little more detail uh, after the webinar when you, when you have access to a copy of this. So let's switch to some colourful stuff, some great tools and pictures of graphs. So years ago when I made the decision to be a marketer, it was really so I could satisfy two sides of me, the creative communicator as well as the curious numbers analyzer in me, the person who loves statistics. For all of us working in the area of social media, um, we have that unique combination of creative, creative content creation led by analytics insights. Um, so it can be very satisfying. Using data from social media activity that can positively impact on the business of our arts organisation by enabling us to track progress to meaningful goals and adjust our direction accordingly is very, very satisfying. It makes everything you do on social media, every post you create, so much more meaningful. So this morning I just wanted to go through 10 tools that I consider very useful for your toolkit and tracking social media. You will for sure be using some of these, um, <clears throat> but some of them may be new to you. And these are tools that I do call on um, and it just may help you to understand each one and, and what they offer. So our first one is Facebook Insights. Facebook provides page administrators with aggregated anonymous insights about people's activity on their page. Um, and gives page administrators a number of aggregate metrics um, under the headings of likes, which is the followers, uh, reach, um, because we all know that uh, just um, it's not just our followers we reach through Facebook, we're one click away um, from all their friends as well. Um, so it gives you an indicator of your reach activity. Um, 
about the visits, um, about your posts, which is really important, uh, the content that you're producing, and the people who are following you on your page. So Facebook Insights are critical for understanding the impact of your Facebook activity, and you have to have a page set up for your organisation, um, and you have to be an administrator of that page to access the insights. It's important to understand that as well as the graphical interface that you're presented with online, which is all the pretty graphs and um, great sort of snapshot trends, you can export more details in a CSV or Excel file um, that is filled with a um, huge number of sheets of data points that you can then manipulate and graph yourself. It can be a little overwhelming to go in there and see all the data that's in there, but better to have um, more than less. And then you can go in and, and choose the data that most uh, most um, helps you to track your goals. So just remember that you can click on that export button and you can um, manipulate that data and get it out of there and, and create, put, put it into the format that's most useful for you. It also has a lot of post level insights showing the most popular and engaging content you've posted and that helps you to adapt and adjust your posting activity because um, you can see straight away what type of posts work and get more engagement and get more reach. No Facebook page manager can be without insights. Um, if you're conducting paid activities such as boost posts on Facebook, some of the results will show up in insights at a high level, but you can also receive more detailed ad, uh, reporting in Ads Manager. So I think you probably all know that to get into insights, you simply click on the insights tab within the administrator dashboard that's visible to you at the top of your page. Now, if you're a user of Twitter, you will know that analytics is not a strong point. It hasn't had its own analytics tool for some time, and we invariably have to use a third-party tool to get insights into our Twitter followers and activity. But how many of you knew that Twitter now offers advertising, but also, even if you don't pay a bean to advertise, you can now get access into the ads platform and the analytics tab within that. And it gives you some really great um, analytics, uh, insights into your Twitter activity, your tweet performance, and your follower base. And not just your follower base's demographics, but their interests and who else they follow. So you can see the primary interests that they have. This is incredibly useful data. So what you do is you go to the cog item at the top right of your Twitter, on um, the normal Twitter app, and select Twitter ads, <coughs> or go to this URL here, ads.twitter.com. I highly recommend you go and uh, search this out after this webinar. You'll be amazed at what you can find in there. And you go up to the analytics tab at the top there, as you can see in the screenshot. Um, they only really released this last year, and they didn't make a song and dance about it, because they clearly want you, you to advertise. But you do not have to pay for advertising to get these basic analytics about your page. A really useful tool. The third tool that you may not be aware of is that as Google Analytics have developed their reports over the last year or two, they have developed a suite of social media reports that give you really useful data on which social media platforms are referring traffic to your site, as you can see here. Um, <coughs> adding secondary dimensions and filtering further can then give you more detailed insights, such as which mobile visits from which platforms are made. Oh, sorry, which um, visits from which platforms are made on a mobile device. Um, you can play around with those reports. Now, if you don't have Google Analytics integrated with your website, please sort it out now. It's a free tool. You may have to pay for a small amount of web developer time uh, to just paste the JavaScript code into your site and get it correctly set up for you, and then you have full access to a range of standard reports, and if you get clever, you can start to explore the custom reports. But the social reports are great. Um, they also show you things like, oh, in the standard reports, just the engagement level on your website um, and where they go on your site after they have um, come from the various platforms. Obviously, this is anonymous aggregated data as well. Very useful to think about what happens uh, between your social media platforms and your website. Um, and also, some of you would have heard me talk about tagged inbound links. Um, Google Analytics does offer the ability for you to create these tagged links that have tracking code within them, um, and that 
enable you to then um, use those links within individual posts on social media as well as in your other inbound um, social, uh, marketing activity like your emails and things. Once you've put that tracking code in, um, when people click on that link, um, the it comes up as a campaign in your Google Analytics and then you can see specifically not only which posts are kind of working well but what people are doing on your website as a result of that post or activity. So um, it's hard to find this um, URL builder but if the best way is just to Google search Google Analytics URL builder and it will bring you to this page that you see in the screenshot and it will instruct you on how to, you put in the URL uh, of your website page that you're linking to and then you give it a campaign name and, um, a, a, sorry, a source and a medium and things, you can, it will instruct you how to do that. And you come up with a very long URL that then you can shorten in a URL shortener but it retains the um, tracking. Google Alerts, another Google tool. Um, in her presentation at last month's Ticketing Professional Conference in Brisbane, social media specialist Amy Maiden reminded us that, quote, social media gives us more than just the opportunity to engage with consumers, it gives us the opportunity to learn from them too. So what she was saying is that listening is an important part of social media. You should be doing this on each of the individual platforms you use, for example, saving searches on your brand name on Twitter, but also Google Alerts can help you to see across the web what people are saying about you and your competitors and your activity. Um, particularly, it picks up when you're being mentioned on blogs, which is very useful. So you just uh, <coughs> go to google.com slash alerts and you can see how you can set up your alerts. Um, and then you can you can define the uh, schedule, the, the, the frequency of these alerts, and you can have them delivered to your um, email address or your RSS, set up an RSS feed. If you have a YouTube channel, YouTube Insights is a veritable feast of data. It's right at your fingertips. Just look for the analytics option under the cog icon at top right. You really need to make the most of these. Um, it's fantastic. It has all about the views, the demographics of people coming to your channel, where they're playing your videos, playback locations, traffic sources, so where they've been sent from, um, audience retention, so how long are they staying on your videos, uh, their engagement and more. Um, you can set time frames for the analytics and you can download and export reports. Absolutely essential if you're running a YouTube channel and want to really improve your impact with it. Our seventh uh, tool is clout. So clout is a measure of social influence. It, it is really good to know your clout score and to watch it go up and down as your activity levels increase and decrease and then compare yourself to others who you either aspire to or feel you're competing with. Clout assigns a numerical value to your social influence by evaluating your online activity and you simply authorise Clout to access an existing Facebook or Twitter account. So as you go to Clout, it invites you to log in by Facebook or Twitter. Um, and so then Clout scores range from 1 to 100. They can fluctuate on a daily basis based on your online activity. The um, average Clout score uh, was stated by Clout recently to be 40 and users with a score of 63 or above are in the top 5%. We did a clout analysis of our optimizer participants in New Zealand and found that they ranged from 25 to 62 um, and that 69% had a score of 40 or above, so above average. And our average clout score was 42.9. Um, you can uh, search on, your, on others and competitors very easily within clout and um, get a few basic analytics out of it as well. So it's a great way for sort of seeing how you stand in the wider sphere online. Here's a great little tool I've only just recently discovered and I'm in the process of exploring it. But what I liked about it is it gives you quite a few um, free reporting on Twitter, your Twitter account. But also you can pay a one-off $20 US fee for a one month, um, you have it for one month and you can pull down and export a whole lot of detailed reports. That's not a lot of money to spend to get some really good insights. Or you can pay a $19 US dollars um, per month subscription. Um, anyway, it offers a whole lot of insights into your tweet activity um, and your followers and your those that you're following um, and enables you to 
download a whole lot of really interesting reports and gives you these sort of overviews that kind of give you a sense of your activity and the responses to it. Really great. I was really pleased to discover this tool and I just wanted to share that with you. If you're using Twitter or any social media platforms really, you probably, uh, depending on whether you're using a dashboard or not, you may use an external URL shortener. So it's a tool like Bitly where you go in and you put in your very long uh, web address that you're linking to and it shortens it down for you so that you're not using up valuable character space, particularly on Twitter, and it just doesn't look really long and unwieldy. If you're using Bitly or a similar platform, it also has some great analytics behind it which shows so once you've created that link and used it on your social media platforms, it gives you a whole lot of data on what's happened to that link, um, how, how many people have clicked on it, how many other people have shared it and who. Um, so it gives you a really good uh, idea of the impact of your activity, which can be useful in, in your reporting. And finally, <coughs> social media dashboards or social media management tools, there's a number of them around some of them free, some of them not, some of them have free versions and others have uh, with, with limited functionality. Uh, I happen to use Sprout Social, I pay for it each month. Uh, it's worth it for me because I'm managing most multiple social media accounts on behalf of clients, but you have to find the right tool for you. But here's a few listed here that you can go and have an explore of. And some of you, it'd be great to hear what you're using um, when we get to the break. Um, anyway, each of these social media dashboards to varying degrees has reporting and most of them enable you to manage um, Twitter, Facebook and sometimes LinkedIn and so you can pull out really interesting data and de um, information on demographics and your activity and your impact and reach and number of impressions and things like that from these tools. So I really couldn't do without my Sprout Social tool, but I know a lot of people love TweetDeck where they manage their Twitter activity and a lot of people love Hootsuite. And a recent one that's uh, come out that you can do a free trial of is Buffer. So good to have a look, but if you do have one of these tools, make sure you maximise the reporting within them. So I think I'll just hand over to Helen to uh, facilitate any questions that have come in so far and also anything that you want to share that you've been using um, in terms of tools that, that you might like people to know about. Thank you, Vicky. That was really fantastic. What a, an amazing range of tools to get our teeth stuck into. I'd um, just like to welcome those of you who have joined us slightly late into this webinar um, and also just to kind of remind you that it, in terms of taking notes or feeling as if you need to capture everything now, don't, don't worry too much because we will be sending out the PDF of these slides and making the recording available early next week via our website and we'll actually email you once it's live and ready to be able to be uh, explored further because there's just so much rich information there. So um, at this stage, if anyone does have a question that they'd like to ask either Vicky or myself or in fact someone else on the line, then you can either unmute yourself by pressing star six on your phone keypad or you can just pop a question into the chat box and we'd be really happy to, to take any questions or even any observations. We're quite keen to know if anyone's using any Facebook Insights, um, particularly if you're using it to change or adapt the content that you're posting, um, particularly if you think that there's um, something that's working for you um, in terms of engagement. Um, we're also interested to know if anyone's using social media dashboards um, like Sprout Social or Hootsuite and how you're finding that and any experiences you have to share. So now's, the ch now's your chance if anyone has anything, um, don't be shy. Okay, we have one from Joyce Lee, yes. fantastic. <laughs> um, so she's asking, read the clout score, what do the numbers actually mean? Um, and we'll unmute you, Joy, so that you can um, also to Vicky. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi Joy. Joy. Hi. Um, well, clout, you know, um, we'd have to go into, you know, the clout algorithm to really know how it creates your score. But it's basically assigning, it's got its own algorithm and it assigns a numerical value 
Mm. to your social influence by evaluating your online activity. So it looks at things like um, not only how many people are, for example, retweeting your tweets or uh, mentioning you in tweets, um, but also how influential they are. So how many followers they ha have and what sort of people are following them. Okay. So it's really looking, and it gives you a sense of who you're, you know, it gives you things like additional stuff like who are your most influential followers and who are the people most frequently um, mentioning you. So um, I don't profess to be a particular, you know, absolute expert on how Cloud does this, mm. but what I find useful is simply that there is a score, an influence score, that I can benchmark myself and, and my the organizations I work with against. And also I can watch that score go up and down and really start to understand um, what activity is having a positive influence on that. Right. Uh, so, so basically um, when you're looking at that score, you're looking at uh, how often um, your tweets are retweeted, how often they're mentioned, and as you said, how influential the people are. So that, that's the knowledge you have when you're looking at those numbers, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So what, what it's really doing is it's assigning this, it's you know, based on, it's probably a very complex algorithm based on your followers mm. um, and their followings and things like that, and how often you're mentioned across the web. It's It's looking at your organization and saying, this organization is quite influential on the web or not. Mm. And across the board we're saying, you know, Cloud is saying that if you, you know, if you have a score over 40, you're doing pretty good. Mm. But, you know, I, I remember doing a lot of Twitter activity around a conference last year and I was watching our score go up and down uh, within 24 hour periods and things mm. and it was really helping me to sort of see that the activity we were doing was getting out there because um, mm -hmm. it really is based on how many are retweeting you, how many are mentioning you, how many are linking to you, those sorts of things. So, so you can monitor it in real time, can you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and so almost, just a, week almost tool, a minute. A free, what's that? Sorry. And, and, and almost by the minute. By the minute. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how often it's refreshing its data, but okay. it pretty much is real time because I've watched it change. You know, I've hit refresh and watched it update. And so you, it's just a web-based tool, it's free, you just go in there to cloud.com and um, log in via your Twitter account and it will immediately give you a score. And then you can kind of compare that to others. But I find with any of these online uh, metrics is that the, the, the most useful things really are to watch your change over time. Mm. Um, so, so what does that mean, sorry, to watch your change over time? How you change over time. So oh, it's a great right. benchmark yeah. for you to say mm. actually our activity is having an impact. Mm. Mm. Um, and so it's really looking at the, the shift for you over time. Are you going up or down? And it's kind of just maybe a warning a warning trigger. Um, okay. If you seem to be losing that's influence. Okay, that's very good, thank and you. Also I hope that answers your question. question. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Matt has. Thank you. It's very useful also to be able to benchmark your clout score against other arts organisations, um, and we do have some data on the from the Optimizer <coughs> benchmarking project that shows obviously the low lowest clout score through to the highest, which Vicky just mentioned, and I think that's quite a useful barometer for some of the some organisations out there to just see how they're comparing. And um, you know, because otherwise it's difficult to know whether you, whether it's a you know kind of how how you're how you're achieve, achieving compared mm. to others in the industry. Does so how do you access that, uh, that benchmark? So the um, the cloud score information will be. I think we're actually producing a report later on this year. We do have um, a live stream of the Optimizer top line results that's on our website already. If you search Optimizer on Creative New Zealand's website, there's also a link in the um, resources at the end of this webinar to the Optimizer blog, and that signing up to that will ensure you get updates on any information that we publish. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Great. before we move on, I think we probably, unless anyone else has a question at this stage, we'll probably continue, but if you do, then do um, just pop it in the Q&A box and we'll come to you at the end of the second half. Is that okay, Great. Vicky? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Helen. And I just okay. wanted to add that obviously um, I haven't 
mentioned all the tools available, but there are, if you're using LinkedIn a lot, there are LinkedIn analytics. If you're using Pinterest, there are Pinterest analytics. Um, Instagram statistics you can get through some third party tools like Statagram and have a look at you know the influence of your images and uh, your followers. And there's a huge variety of other tracking and analytics tools. In fact, I have included in the resources a very useful blog post I found which lists 50 tools. Some of them, quite a few of them are, require paid investment, which is, and I know that, you know, that's a bit of a stretch for a lot of you, so that's why I've really focused on the free tools available to you. So, I, those are the tools. What we want to think about is what we are actually measuring. So I'm going to give you 10 ideas of things that you can typically measure that are typically related to social media goals of arts organisations. And these will help you to set KPIs and track your performance. The first, um, obviously, is demographics of your online following. So you'll find these across all the analytics tools such as Facebook Insights, that Twitter ad analytics tool I showed you, YouTube Insights, your social media dashboard reports, and other social media platform insights, uh, third parties that, like that Twitter one I showed you, and also uh, Statagram, which is a great tool for looking at Instagram insights. So you're looking at things like, you're going to get things like gender, age segment, geographic location, and actually in the case of the Twitter ad tool that goes one step further and shares their most common interests, all aggregated, of course, and all based on the information that these individuals have put into their social media profiles. Um, again, we have pulled out some interesting demographics um, from the Optimizer Benchmarking Program, which we'll publish on the blog. For example, um, across the New Zealand arts sector, we found out just one is that 64% of Facebook followers were female. Uh, another interesting one we found out was that 45 to 54 was the largest age segment viewing arts organisations videos on YouTube. So we've got a batch of these that you can kind of compare yourself against, but I think the most important thing with the demographics is relating them back to your goals. So a lot of organisations I work with, um, quite a few of them are looking at building international followings because they're touring organisations. This is something you can specifically uh, aim to achieve on social media is to build up those international followings and you can track that goal in demographics. Um, also, if you're looking at reaching particular age groups, whether you're looking at reaching youth audiences or increasing your older following on social media, the demographics information is where you're really going to track this. The second metric that's going to be useful is community size and rate of growth. Now, we all know that in social media, size is not everything, and level of engagement is the most important thing. However, to increase your reach and your potential engagement, you need to build your community of quality followers. So the size of your community and its rate of growth is a really important metric, um, and it also gives you the opportunity to compare yourself to others because this is information you can get about your competitors and others who you aspire to be like because it's front-end information that you can get from their Twitter accounts and from their Facebook pages and um, from YouTube and LinkedIn. You can see how many followers that they have and then you can compare yourself to them. But also you may set a target, um, for example, that you want to increase your Facebook followers by 500 in the next year and then you can break that down to a sort of monthly target and then track your monthly growth using these, these, um, this data. The third thing that's really important to look at and track is content performance. So you are being content publishers on your social media channels. Everything you post, every tweet, every Facebook post, every LinkedIn post, every YouTube video that you load, every image that you put up, it's, you're being a digital content publisher. Um, and we've talked before in previous webinars this year about the importance of content marketing. So understanding how your content is performing is very important. So you can go, I mean, the Facebook insights now are fantastic for this. Um, you can look at each post. This is a little, the top left here is a little screenshot of post level data. You can see, you can sort by uh, which ones reached most people, uh, which ones were collected the most engagement in terms of comments and likes and shares. 
um, and you can see what type of posts they are and whether images are working better for you than links and things like this. Um, I just yeah, so I just noticed that Joy asked a question about the previous metric, which is where you find community size and growth data across all those uh, tools that I talked about. So Facebook Insights gives you really great data on um, your community size, like your likes, for example, and in Twitter you can see in those metrics I showed you um, how big your following is and how much it's growing, and same in LinkedIn, same in YouTube, all that data is in those analytics insights. Yeah. Okay, so going back to content performance, yeah, really important to, to really understand. I talked about YouTube insights. Um, YouTube is great for showing you how your videos are performing, so really use that data. So when you post things, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, go back in and look at what you posted and what's working and what didn't work so well, and try and work out what was it about those posts that was successful. Was it the subject matter? Was it the length of the post? Was it the fact that it was an image? Um, you know, was it topical at the time? Try and assess that, and then try and emulate and repeat that, and just keep testing out your content um, to see what works. Reach is another uh, thing that social media metrics can tell you. So um, you'll see these are little screenshots from a variety of different analytics tools, the ones that I've referred to previously, giving you a sense of um, impressions, which is how many people um, potentially saw your content or your post, meaning that it came up in their news feed or their ticker or whatever social media platform they were looking at. Um, and also you can specifically see with posts on Facebook, for example, how many each one reached. Um, and you can look in those, remember Bitly and the link um, shortener, and you can analyze the links in your tweets and how far they went. This is really good for understanding uh, the potential of your activity and how big your community could potentially be. And you want to just keep increasing that reach, so you're, you're really trying to keep building that figure up. Engagement is another one that's very important. So. Um, You'll see that top left screenshot there, it comes out of that data that you export out of Facebook Insights. And this is the talking about this rate, which shows how many of your followers were sharing, liking, or commenting on your content, or clicking on it, um, on any particular day. And you can, you can work that out as, the, as a percentage by um, just taking, say that top left one is 15, so 15 people on that, in fact that was a weekly figure, so 15 people in that week were talking about you, 15 out of your however many followers, and you can get a percentage rate. Um, and that's, yeah, that's a real sense of, um, you really want to keep building that up and you really want to keep it consistent. So sometimes you're talking about this rate will be very high when you've got, say, an event on, a lot happening or something's very topical. Sometimes it can drop right down to almost zero. What you're looking for is trying to even out that line. Um, you can get other engagement stats on, in that post-level data in the graphical inter interface of Facebook Insights. You can also get things, this is some Instagram stats that I've got here. You can see how many likes, comments, shares you can get, you've got on content in all of your social media analytics. So engagement's all about how many people are actually using or commenting on or sharing your content, which is very important. It's one thing to have a great big following, but if nobody's actually doing anything, um, you know, eventually the algorithms are going to stop your content being delivered to those people and it's a slippery slope. You really want to be um, working those communities and having them having a conversation with you. <coughs> Visitor origin is another um, metric that's very important. So this is where your uh, followers have come from and your visitors to your social media channels have come from. So when I say come from, I'm not talking about geographic stuff, which is in the first one, the demographics. I'm talking about um, what other sites have sent you, sent people to your social media channels. So have they come from Google searches? Have they come from another particular website? Um, and also, um, 
really, in terms of things like Facebook, it tells you where your likes have come from. So is it that they've come via posts from other people or have they come from paid advertising that you've done on Facebook? Have they come from, uh, you know, they were on your page and then they liked you within your page and things like that. So that gives you a real sense of what is driving uh, people to your social media channels and which particular sources are um, very effective for you. So then you can put some more effort into those things. <clears throat> and kind of in the other direction, uh, social referrals is where you, you know, what are your social media channels doing to refer people to your website? So we looked at the Google Analytic social reports earlier. This is where you find that information. A real sense of, um, first of all, an overview of um, wh what percentage of your website traffic is coming from your social channels. And, you know, do you want to grow that over time? Is one of your goals to really engage people further with your organization and ultimately bring them up that loyalty ladder? Then probably you want to be driving people from your social channels to your website where they can see a whole content hub about you and they have the opportunity to do things like sign up for email or potentially buy a ticket or explore the idea of buying a ticket or um, converting into a visitor of some sort. So if that's an important goal for you, then you really want to be looking at these social referral stats in Google Analytics and understanding if you're increasing that percentage. And then it breaks it down, as I mentioned before, into individual social networks and you can see which ones are driving traffic to your site. So this is a great one to report back on if you're looking for investment from your organization into uh, putting more into your Facebook page, for example, if you can show that it's really driving visits to your site and then you can look further into the data to see what's happening to those visits and how long they're staying on your site and what they're doing on your site and ultimately are they converting into something, um, then that's really valuable information to prove the value of your investment. You're probably getting brain overload by now, um, but I'm going to keep going. Another really important uh, metric is mobile activity on social. So um, going into those social referral reports I mentioned before and then drilling down into um, how many are coming from mobile. And also within some of the analytics, for example, the YouTube analytics, it shows you the device type, so where people are coming to your YouTube channel from and whether it's computer, tab tablet or mobile phone. Again, this can be really useful information to understand how your um, users are viewing your social channels and to remind you that inevitably and more and more they're viewing them on a mobile device and adjusting your activity, even things like the length of your posts and the shape of the images you post to optimize that for mobile. <coughs> so we had a lot, little talk about clout um, and your general influence with your social activity in the wider uh, internet. So um, you can get that from tools like Clout and you can also get it from some of the social media dashboards. So Sprout Social, for example, uh, has an influence score and an engagement score. Um, look, I don't know the details of all the algorithms, but it's very interesting to make sure that my influence score of my uh, social accounts are going up rather than down. So that's how I would use that. And the last really thing really is um, some of you will be doing a lot of paid placement, so buying Facebook ads, uh, boosting posts, things like that, perhaps doing ads through YouTube and you can even advertise on Twitter now and LinkedIn. So if you're doing any sort of paid placement, remember to include that in your social media tracking and you'll be wanting to go into the ad reports to really understand what was the reach, what was the engagement level, what was the, uh, the click-through rate um, and how much did you pay per acquisition for that that activity. So if it turned into a like, uh, how much did you pay for that like? So really you're going to have to go back to this when, when you get a copy of this uh, webinar, but these are the sorts of things you can track and if you can kind of relate those back to your, those sort of goals that we talked about earlier in the webinar, you'll get a sense of how these metrics can really help you. So last but not least, I know there's a lot of information here, I just wanted to talk a little bit about reporting. Um, reporting is a headache for people, um, really on all their online marketing, but 
um, <coughs> social media in, in particular can be a big headache. How do you find time to report? What do you track? How do you make sense of all that data? Um, and sometimes we have a sense that we're supposed to be much cleverer than we are and that it's more complicated than it actually is. But you know, I'm really about keeping it simple. And so I wanted to give you a, an idea for approaching your social media reporting that might help you sort of cut through it. And it comes down to those five W's that are used in journalism and research and police investigations. Um, they're a really useful way to approach your any online marketing reporting, but in this case, I'm focusing on social media. Who, what, where, when, and why. So this is a great model. So first of all, <coughs> ask yourself, who needs reporting on your social media activity? You, yourself, your team, your, your managers, your board, perhaps your funders, and perhaps even suppliers need some report. I don't know. What do they really need to know? Do they need to know your achievement towards your goals, what's working and what's not? Uh, do they need to be comparing to the past? Do they need to understand your positioning against your competitors? Do they need to know about return on investment? Do they need to know where change is required? Where do they need to receive these reports? Is it as part of an existing report, perhaps as a monthly management report or an overall report that you deliver to your um, CEO? Do they need to have something at board meetings, in staff meetings? Do they need some automated emails of particular reports just sent to them regularly? Or does it need to be up on the wall of your um, office so that everyone can see the progress that you're making? When or how often do they need reports? Daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, or is it an ad hoc thing on an as needs basis? And why do they need social media reporting? Is this to make decisions? Uh, to decide on what to do because they need evidence of their investment? Do they need to be persuaded of something? Do they need to make um, funding or investment decisions? Is it, um, or do they need to report to their superiors? So, Going back to this model, when you know that your executive director, the WHO, needs overview evidence that you are tracking towards the goals she signed off on, the what, in a report form that she can re easily read on her iPad at home, that's the where, monthly so she can feel ahead of things, that's the when, and so that she can include results in her monthly report to the board, that's the why, it is much easier to formulate a report template and choose the metrics that prove you're achieving your KPIs. And remember, it all goes back to your social media goals that are feeding into your organizational goals. That's when it all makes sense. So what a social media report looks like is completely dependent on each specific who, what, where, when, and how. <coughs> So your social media report may look like this, for example. So you may have your um, your goals, and then you may list the KPIs for each platform specific to these goals, and then you may show how you're tracking each quarter towards those goals. It might look like that. Or it may look like this. It may be more of a narrative, what's worked well, what hasn't worked well, what are the puzzles and what are our recommended next steps? This may be appropriate for reporting to your team who work under you or who work with you. <coughs> or it may be something that you do um, within specific metrics. So you may pull out those some of those 10 metrics we talked about, those measures that might be about demographics and how that is changing and how that relates back to your goals. Uh, you might be looking at engagement levels and what's been working well and what hasn't. Um, and then you may have a narrative after this which sort of recommends what you do next. So there are as many um, options for social media reports as there are organizations really. Um, but if you go back to the you know who, what, where, when, and why, uh, that can help you define how much reporting you need to do and how often and to whom. So I think the main thing to remember that why why you are tracking all this thing is 
that all these things is that one of the most valuable things that social analytics can do is to enable course correction. You are using these analytics to steer yourself back to your goals that feed into your organisational goals. And how much more satisfying will that be than sitting at your desk on a Monday morning thinking, I have to find something to tweet. So just, uh, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll break for questions now. Um, if there are any more questions, I'll hand over to you for a moment, Helen. Mm, thanks, Vicky. Um, so we're nearly at the end. Um, these presumably aren't the questions right at the end, but we do have one from um, Rob from the Court Theatre. It's, it's probably more of an observation, but he's actually wanting to know um, it, it, whether or not anyone's seen stuff.co.nz's article on Facebook slashing brands' organic <coughs> paid search. Uh, sorry, paid reach um, to just one or two percent. Um, I haven't seen that at all. But um, Rob, if you're on the line, do you want to just briefly say a few words about that? Uh, hi, Helen. Um, hi. Yeah, just a few words about it. So apparently, when you do a post out, it doesn't go to everyone that's liked your page. Now it goes to about two percent of those likes. Um, that's the way I understand it, so I was wondering if you could clarify that. Right. And then, does that mean that to reach all of the people that we wanted to reach, we now have to boost the post to those people? Right, so do you think that's being done in order to procure more advertising revenue? Is that... <laughs> is that <laughs> correct. Yes, they're saying it's also to limit the advertising that's on people's Facebook pages um, so that people aren't spam with advertising, but yeah, the bottom line is it's to increase advertising revenue for Facebook. But yeah, yeah. For organisations like us, I mean, you've spoken a lot about your likes and stuff, but it almost makes your likes uh, redundant now. Yeah. Now that you're it, it, those people that like your page. Yeah, this is a this is a big issue, Rob, and it's been you know gradually happening for a while while they've been eating away at your organic reach with their algorithm. Um, and you know, you do. It, it is alarming to see how you know, if you do boost a post and pay twenty dollars or twenty five dollars or thirty dollars or whatever it is that it's suggesting you pay, um, and then you see how many more people it reaches, and then you you know go into that post level data. It is quite uh, frightening to see. What we are doing at the moment, Tim and I, is going. Tim Roberts and I, who's part, he's one of the leaders of this optimizer benchmarking program is we are going into the participants' data and starting to have a look at how that is impacting um, and doing a bit of an analysis of how it's real, you know, what sort of changes are happening um, to that reach of posts. So we hope to have some information to you all through the Optimizer blog very soon um, about what we're seeing. But yeah, I guess, you know, we're starting to have to think about um, investing uh, a bit of money into those posts that are really important to get reach. What I can say is that certain posts are getting more reach and images work really, really well. So whenever you can use images, use images. Not just on Facebook, but on Twitter and LinkedIn as well. Um, it's being proven that images on Twitter have a really big difference to the number of retweets and the engagement and things. But yeah, and I think this is all part of People, uh, organisations are starting to look at other options. Um, you know, how the growth of Instagram, the growth of Tumblr, and the growth of LinkedIn over the last year has sort of indicated to me that um, organisations are starting to have to look at other options because of what mm -hmm. Facebook is doing. So I don't have an easy answer for you, but it is an alarming uh, development. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and we're exactly. certainly having a look at how it's impacting mm -hmm. organisations here. Yeah. Mm. In fact, now we keep posting mm. and we boost our, our posts for the recommendations. Mm. Mm. Um, the next webinar um, very um, kind of chimes with the topic for the next one, which is on effective use of Facebook advertising. So uh, it's almost like we, we could segue into <laughs> the next yeah. webinar, but, but uh, do hold that thought because um, it's an interesting trend to observe. Um, and yeah. I think Facebook as is obviously still one of the most powerful social media platforms, if not the most. And, and obviously, they 
uh, have an awful lot of power because because of their um, influence. So mm. yeah. I think this shows the value as well of the Optimizer Benchmarking Program because we have access into 38 organizations' insights. So to get that, uh, you know, an, an issue like this comes up, uh, a trend, and we can go straight into those insights and start to see if we can see how that's impacting organizations in the local arts sector so we can respond quite quickly to that, yeah. We might want to pull some of that out for the next webinar too so that if you are yes. able to join us, we can go into it in more detail. Now, yeah. I know the time is um, right on the um, half hour at 11.30, so uh, just to, we've obviously just pulled up the resources page. Um, we would encourage anyone that hasn't seen the previous webinars to have a look at those. They're all available to view uh, on our website. Um, also to sign up to the Optimizer blog if you haven't done already. And um, there's um, obviously the Vicky mentioned before the 50 top tools for social media monitoring. Um, that's a blog, is it, Vicky? Uh, yeah, it's a blog post, but it's quite yeah. useful because it's very comprehensive. Um, yeah. Don't panic about writing down those links, which we had. I had to do bitly links because they were so long, uh, the web addresses. But um, you'll be getting a copy of this, and what I might do is also post the Optimizer blog, but do note down OptimizerNZ.com and go and um, bookmark that blog or uh, sign up for updates from it. Um, do that after this and then anything vital I'll send through through that. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'd just like to thank you very much, Vicky, for a, a really illuminating and useful webinar today. Um, many of you have got brain ache, but hopefully you're <laughs> able to take quite a few of these tips away and also revisit some of the useful advice in the webinar. I think the reporting templates in particular are really useful to go back to and just see what might be useful for your organization. Interestingly, um, could you tell us where you source those from, Vicky? Are they from um, examples of organizations within New Zealand or overseas? Yeah, these templates that I just put up, I kind of have, they're me playing around with different template ideas right. and okay. um, based so on organizations that I've worked with. They're fictional yeah. templates, yeah. but they're very much based on things that I've done for organizations I've worked with. Really so. useful. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of you on the webinar today. We've um, had about 20 participants and it's always great to meet new people on the line so do join us for the next one. We'll be sending an email out very shortly for next month's webinar on the 23rd of April which is on effective use of Facebook advertising but until then um, go well, kakite anō and um, have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks Vicky. Thank you Helen and thank you everyone.